Hi, I'm Seamless, and today, in continuation of a series in collaboration with EDM Studio, I will be covering the basics of FL Studio, and today, uh, that is going to be the mixer. So we're talking about the mixer. That's why I'm saying to you. Today, today we are talking about the mixer. That's this thing. So, like most uh, digital audio workstation, the mixer is presented in such a way that is to be reminding you of a, an, a, 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 an analog mixing console. I can use words so well. Um, in the sense that we have these channel, sort of channel strips that are organized in in a way that we have like the fader and like the panning, a soloing option, and they're numbered and, and all that kind of good stuff. And that's, that's you know, pretty basic um, sort of deal. Uh, the FL mixer is a little bit more basic. Um, there's not there's not a lot of like, uh, like if you looked at um, like Cubase or Pro Tools, for example, the mixer tends to be a little bit more um, obviously fully featured, but that does not necessarily mean that we have less to work with FL Studio. In fact, we have probably more, but, um, we'll, we'll look at how, how we, how it's supposed to work, obviously. And then we'll talk about a whole bunch of really kind of hidden advanced things that we can do with a mixer that, um, I mean, I didn't really know about until recently. So, um, the mixer is broken up into 99, uh, inserts, four sends, and this selected track. They all do very interesting things. Um, the sort of the weirdness about the sends are that they're there, but they're not super necessary to be even to be used for what they're for. Um, the way that the mixers worked is, is routed is that all of the inserts are route are already pre-routed into each of the four sends. The routing uh, level is at zero by default. So this is so that if you wanted um, a common use would be to have like put a reverb on one of these sends. And then if you wanted something to have reverb, you would just turn up uh, its routing into that send to add additional reverb to uh, whatever you want to have re reverb on. And you can do that. The thing is, though, is that um, since a particular update, I don't think you could have always do this, but since a particular update, you can route any mixer insert into any other mixer insert. Um, you might have been able to do that forever. I'm not totally sure. To be honest, um, I wasn't exactly the best at it, at using FL when I first started using it. But um, the way this works is that we have these arrows over here. And by default, the mixer inserts are routed into the sense and also to the master. Everything is everything is going to the master by default. And so what we can do is if we right click these, we're presented with some options. We have right this channel, side chain to this track, and side chain to this track only. Right, right this track. So these are all basically just different configurations. They don't, they don't, they're not, they're not, they don't do things that you can't do even without doing that. So like, for example, route this route, if I wanted to route 16 or 15 into 16, I would click on it like that. As you see now, I have, it's in, engaged with the route and then the uh, default um, volume level is 100% out of 125% is maximum volume. And then I could also deselect master. So that means that now the, the 15 is going through 16 and then 16 is going out to the master. Now, so side chaining by default, when you route something to the other channel, it's going to side chain. It's already side chaining, um, but uh, side chain only. That is to say that you only want the uh, like the, the transient volume level information to go in, but not the actual audible audio. You would just turn it all the way down. So that's what that does, and you can do that by you know do that automatically, kind of deal. And side chain of this track only will undo any other additional writing you might have had like so so that's what that routing does now why would you do that well um fun uh, fun i use fun a lot i'm not necessarily sure i mean it's fun to me but useful let's try using that word a useful thing to do would be like what i've done here with the percussion so i use the the four basic samples this is that pattern uh project that I have we've been using <laughs> Now, by default, these four channels are already routed to the first four inserts. Now, how do you do that? Well, um, each channel, that's what these are called, including the plugin channels, these are all channels, has a channel settings window, which is this thing. In the upper right, we have effects number. And if you click, click and drag, you can set which effect it's routed, which insert it's routed into. And so cake was in one, clap was in two, hat and snare, whatever. Clap and snare are both kind of just snares, so I just called them both snare one and snare two. So that they're routed. Now, what I've done is I've routed all of these into this this fifth channel, which I've called drums. So 
So now I have total volume control over the entirety of all the drums because I've routed them all into one mixer insert, as opposed to if I wanted to, ha I had to solo all four of these individually or automate the volume faders individually. I mean, you can do, but it's a little bit easier if you have them routed. Now, um, you also might have seen that if I if I click on the kick here, you see that I have these that's also routing into uh, the bass and the ARP channel, but with no volume. And that's because they're side chaining. I'll talk more about side chaining uh, later, but um, if you're super curious about it now, I have a, a video on my channel called Side Chaining for Fun and Profit. If you search for that, um, in my, my videos list, you'll find it and it discusses, uh, it discusses, it's disgusting. It's not disgusting. It discusses how I typically tend to do side chaining plus some other options that you, that I might not necessarily use myself, but that you can, because you can do what you want. And so, yes, that's what that writing is for. Now, each of these inserts, uh, are also where you put the effects. So, uh, you can see here in the cake, I have an EQ over here and there are eight in one of, in one of the eight mixture or effects slots. So um, you might be thinking, oh, only eight, that's kind of a limitation. And it's somewhat of a limitation, but there are somewhat there are ways to get around this. So the most obvious one is like in the example of, of channel 15 here is like, oh, I have eight effects. Oh no, I ran out. I want to add a, some more effects. I could uh, route it to 16 and then I can just use eight more effects. I, you know, I can route 16 to 17 and then 17 into 18 and then that kind of stuff. And then have as many effects as there are mixer inserts, but again, there are still limited mixer inserts. I try as hard as I can not to use as many uh, as I might need to, just just to be more efficient with things. But uh, some people layer the crap out of their songs and just have everything into really huge projects, and that's not necessarily bad. And I can see how that can be somewhat of an issue. The other way around this is to utilize a patcher instance. So the way that you do an effect is that in each of these inserts, you have your your eight, and they have these drop down windows, and these have some options. You got uh, select presets, uh, you got a spare state option, you move up and down, which you can do uh, by scrolling. Just if you have your mouse over it, you can scroll. But if you don't have a scroll mouse, you can just do move up and down through the uh, options. So click on here and you go to select and then you have list of effects. In the first video of this series, I covered how to add additional um, third-party VSTs to things. It's the same same process for here. Put it in your VST folder, go to more, uh, refresh, fast scan, and then any new ones will show up in red. And then you can select them by initializing them with the little F button here, and then they'll show up in the uh, window here. So then you can add an effect. Now you have an effect. And as well as in uh, the effects windows here, you see we also have a whole bunch of stuff going on down here. So each insert has uh, a built-in parametric equalizer which is good for quick and dirty EQ stuff. Like I want the bass gone, no more bass. Pretty good. It's good for doing low, like low latency, uh, low CPU work. If you don't want to add a full uh, parametric equalizer, which can sometimes be a bit of a CPU hog if you have thousands of them. So that's what that's useful for. Uh, you also have this volume control, which is the same as this volume control. Um, but there's also the panning control, which is the same as this panning control. And you can kind of control that with this, uh, XY thing going on here, which could be useful sometimes. So this is panning, and then this is the stereo separation uh, knob. So all the way in, it will flatten everything to center. So it'll be mono. And then outward, it'll exemplify, it'll uh, accentuate the um, stereo effect if there are any present. Now, and then next to these, we have somewhat related options. So these are toggles, and this is a reverse polarity, so that if you want the phase to be different, and then we have swap left and right, which is swap up the right stereo channels in case you want to change your stereo image a little bit. The way the parametric EQ works is that you have um, the position, band position here, and then band width below, and then level. It's pretty straightforward stuff. Um, I don't really know what that signifies. I'm not sure why it's there. This is the uh, track latency compensation, which we could say listed up here, otherwise known as PDC. Uh, pre-delay compensation. So it's, it's, it's delay compensation. You can set you can set it um, one way or another. Uh, you can have it be pre or post. And um, there is an auto option. This is masters. You can you can set uh, set the, the delay compensation from um, any of the other uh, inserts that have it set. Um, I typically tend not to mess with that 
super often. Um, it's actually cool to note that um, it set that to the drums, and I'm pretty sure that's because the drums has the Maximus going. And the drum, the Maximus actually introduces a bit of latency as a result of the attack time and look ahead delay and all that stuff like that. So there's actually actual measurable delay that's coming from there. And that can sometimes cause phasing issues in your track if like you have two a layer like like one sound and then a similar sound going on and one of them is delayed by two milliseconds. That can be enough to uh throw the image out of whack if they're both like in the same register, uh, in terms of uh pitch. So there's, there's ways to deal with that. There's auto options. Uh, to set to set that uh, some oh yeah it's in here we got uh, pl uh, plug-in delay compensation you have automatic where it will uh, calculate all of it for you and uh, delay them in such a way that everything will be lined up uh, as a result of the, the what it knows is happening in terms of delay in terms of uh, the plugin that you're using um, but again I, I don't really mess with that a whole lot so read the manual that's what I'll say about that we also have these in and out options. So this is how, if you want, if you're doing a recording project, where you're recording inputs, this is where you would act. This is where you would set the inputs. So, um, like when I uh, in my video, I have uh, I I have a whole um, two part tutorial about recording drums that I did recently, and then a video where I had a guy come in, a drummer come in and play drums, and he's a really good drummer. You should check it out. His name is Joel. Um, in here is where you set what uh, whatever inputs you have for your uh, audio interface. I run a pre as Fire Studio project. It's an eight input. I have two of them, so that means I have sixteen. I think one of them is bad, that's why I only use fifteen. Um, I'm pretty. I think I had eleven mics on that one that drum recording video I was talking about. Um, and then so I would set them in here. I only have one on right now, so I only get the eight. So you also have the you have the option of doing stereo or mono in the sense that I have um, one and two summed together. Only one is left and one is right. Same thing for three, four, seven, and all that, whatever. And then you have your split if options. And then so here you can do mono where it's one, two, three through eight, all that kind of deal. So I do like, you know, kick, snare, hats, uh, overheads, toms, and whatever. So that's where you set that. You can also set uh, separate individual outs. By default, your master is going to be set to out one and two of whatever device that you're using, which you can set in your audio options. Oh, they feel good. Um, but uh, something else you can do, like, for example, if you go to options into general settings or I guess MIDI, yeah, no, audio, um, we have preview mixer track. If I set this, set this to be, say, 15, that actually will output the metronome. <laughs> Straight, it will output the metronome if it's, if it's active. As you can see, it's not right after the master, so we can't hear it. I forgot I had the chorus engaged. I was about to be really freaked out by the, the weird delay that was happening. Oh no, I opened glitch. Didn't mean to do that. Wouldn't that be a great mention room? So, um, if I wanted to, I could set this uh, to five and six, which is the output that I have set up for the headphones into the other room where the drums are so that the drummer who's listening can listen to the metronome on his own track and it's not interfering with anything else. So that's that's what um, the outputs are useful for. Also, if you're doing like uh, stereo or like 7.1 mixing, this is where you would, like if you wanted to route like the first five, six or seven to be the individual outs, that's how you would route it to be the actual outputs that your device is outputting to your surround sound setup. Mm, yes, okay, so. Now that we've covered the pretty obvious things, um, oh yeah. So in, in terms of recording, uh, once you once you selected like what whatever input you want, uh, you have to arm it by selecting these disk saving icons. So you set those. You have your you set your your ends. <laughs> that happened because of reasons. I don't want. I don't really want to mess with that right now. Four. Ha <laughs> ha. So. This you see you have four and then five, six, and seven and whatever, and then you hit the record button, and then you have one of these selected, and then it'll record these five inputs, and we'll save them wherever you want to save them. So if you right click it, you'll it'll actually tell you where to save it. By default, it'll put it in the recorded folder, which is over here. This is where you're seeing all these that are showing up. So that's what that does. This also has a different um, uh, function, which we'll cover in a second when we start talking about what happens in here. Uh, the other thing I want to bring up is these guys. So these are, um, this 
indicates that there are effects active on any given channel. If you click on it, it will disable the effects on that channel, all of them. So it'll be as if they're running through a just a, a normal insert without effects engaged. The fader positions and stuff like that will still be active, but not the effects. That's what that does. Yeah. And so I also want to point out, you can tell um, which channels are being routed into a bus if you click on the bus and you can see which channels are grayed out. This is because you can't route something into a channel that's being routed into it because that would create terror and sadness. So that's what that is. And so you can see, oh well, no, I forgot which ones are routed here and you can see which ones are. That's very helpful for that sort of purpose. Now, um, you can save uh, presets, mixer insert presets. So like if I have uh, this drums, I like it, I go to file, Save it and uh, now it's saved. I can go over here, file open, and open it. And then now I have that drum bus. Here's something cool though. If you if you go back here and right click and you go to save mixture track, if you click and drag it and then drop it, you have the same effect. Um, this is true for lots of things actually. You can also do it um, for saving uh, preset um, presets and actual effects. So that that, that maximus is the same as that maximus. So that's what that does. Other options include um, audio editor and an audio logger, which basically open up uh, an Edison that you can mess with. And it'll be in that channel. And the link selected channels to this track. So uh, that's if you select channels and then you say link selected channels to this track, it will, um, it will link it. So it's control L. You can do that without coming to this min menu. And then on starting from this track, what this will do is it will uh, say I have kick, hang, clap, hat, and snare. It'll put them in the next four. It'll put them in that one. And then also, and this is number 10, it'll put it in 10, 11, 12, and 13. So you have them uh, all lined up. This is useful for like if you have, if you have like a whole bunch of stems that you want to load in for like a remix or something, and you have like 30 of them and you want them all in their individual mixture inserts. It's a big pain in the ass to come here, go one, uh, two, uh, three, so you can just select them all, pick a mixer insert while they're still selected, and just do uh, control shift, right? Yeah, shift control L, shift control L, and then I will drop them all into uh, sequential mixer inserts already, all for you. And then we have selected select linked channels, which does the opposite. So if it, if it has, like, you have, like, if all four of them were in one channel and you said select linked channels, it will select them for you to see what's in there. And we have create submix, which uh, pretty much does what, you, what we've already done here just for you. It's an automatic function versus that. Um, also, a fun fact is that if you, uh, I think it's shift and, yeah, if you hit shift and you scroll, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a one way to move uh, a mixer insert, like so. Versus if you just scroll, it'll scroll through them as if you're selecting new ones. They have icon selection. You can rename it. You can color it. You can color them just like you can color uh, pretty much everything else you can color in FL. So you can have colored uh, mixer inserts. That's just something I tend not to do. You know, solo, alt solo. So, okay, if you if you uh, click on it like this, it'll, it'll disable the channel. But if you right-click it, it'll solo it. And it'll disable everything else. You know, uh, however, if you do it to something that's bust, like a kick channel, see if I do that, it'll um, solo the kick, but it'll also keep engaged everything it's routed to. And this includes things that it's side chaining. So it can be kind of weird because if I like, I don't, I want to hear just kick, not the bass and the ARP, then I have to go in and also disable the kick and the, uh, the bass and the ARP, which not really a big deal to me, but sometimes I can see how that could be annoying. A lot of threaded processing, this is a very specific kind of thing that I typically don't mess with. I have a, I run in um, an i7-3770, which some people have asked what CPU I run. I haven't mentioned that before, but um, just keep putting it out there. Uh, it does its job pretty well. So this is these are things I typically don't need to mess with because it works just fine. Also, if you hit Alt and do left and right, it'll move them around just to give you the shift and scroll. So, good things. So now let's talk about global options for the mixer. So we have different view options. We can move around uh, where where things are. We also have this wide track option, which I don't really dig. Uh, we have this neat waveform option, which uh, BT actually likes a lot. <laughs> Uh, 
that's super easy way to see like what's what because it's kind of easy to keep track of like what things are just by looking at it it's really obvious to see that's a cake and that's a hat but um the only reason why i don't like using it is because it doesn't really show like it doesn't, it doesn't i don't really have a good idea of what the db is anymore like unless i were to say so i don't really use that very often and, and as i mentioned with the uh playlist video uh, this one also has an option for detached mode, which means that if this were, if I had more than one monitor, this could go to some other monitor and be all by itself. So there's there's plenty of multiple multi monitor support for FL. So we have um, these are the mixer tracks, uh, mixer track options, which were present that we saw in here. And we have the same thing all going on here. However, we have this we have the, the plug in delay composition, which is the set for all tracks and then the automatic setting for whenever you add in new uh, plugins. Link all parameters and then view. Link all parameters is a very odd sort of uh, specialized option, which I am not going to get into. Disk recording. So okay, this is this is interesting. This is this is basically the um, the freeze option that you get in something like Ableton or the bounce in place in Logic. It may or may not be called that. That's just what BT calls it. And since he's the Logic user, I'm just going to assume that that's what that means. All right, so we have um, this 32-bit float recording. Um, so basic kind of audio knowledge. Uh, audio files are typically presented as either 16-bit or 24-bit. And the 32-bit is an interesting third option that you can use. You're not really going to see... And actually, in fact, if you try to open a 32-bit WAV file on like a Mac platform, you're not going to have a good time. So... This is really only like for internal FL and PC use. And there's reasons for that, but there's not, I'm not going to get into the specifics of that for this particular video. So the reason I'm, I'm engaging disc recording here is that, um, let's see, I want to record the bass for a second. So that's this guy. The bass is in this channel. So now that you have this option that was grayed out originally. That's because now I have this selected. And then we have auto unarm, auto create automation clip, latency compensation, and 32-bit float recording. So this means that it's going to create a 32-bit WAV file. Uh, it's going to do it, and it's automatically going to put it in the uh, correct location in the playlist. So let's do that. Doop, 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 doop. And there it is. Note that it saved the sidechain values. So it also put it in the master, which is good, because if it put it back into the base channel, it actually wouldn't sound anything like it's supposed to. So that's what you would do if you didn't want to keep uh, whatever you're doing live. If you didn't want, if you wanted to render out something that maybe was causing too much CPU usage, but you still need to have it in the um, arrangement, that's how you do it. And that's what the disk recording function is for in FL. Mm, okay, thinking of things I may not have talked about that are useful information for the mixer. The mixer is pretty straightforward stuff, honestly. Like, it's not super complex, and the neat things you can do with it um, are pretty obvious once you look at the options and, you know, read the manual and stuff like that. Also, a lot of the things that you have options for, you can just do manually with the routing functions and stuff like that. You know, so good times can be had by all. <laughs> Double check in to make sure things are correct and good. Yeah, so it's fine. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll try to answer them. And as usual, have, have a nice day. And prepare yourself for many, many more of these videos. There'll be so many, and hopefully they'll be useful for you. Because I'm, I'm, I'm I always kind of shied away from doing uh, these sorts of beginner tutorials, just because there are lots of them. There are lots of them on YouTube, but I, I you know, I guess it's fine to have it all in kind of one place. Because if you come, come to me for the super awesome, huge base tutorials. And then you also want, you know, refreshers on basic stuff or all the way around. If you come, if you come for the, the base tutorials and you have no idea what I'm talking about because you've never used FL before, then 
it's good to have this sort of stuff here to help because I can see how that can be frustrating. So yeah, have a nice day because your day should be nice. All days should be nice.